If you're looking for the best road running shoes, here's a list you must see. We made this list based on our personal preference and sorted it based on their features, prices, quality, durability, and reputation of the manufacturers and customer feedback. Also, we've included options for every type of customer. So let's get started. At the first position of our list, we have Brooks Ghost 14. From the dyeing process to the tongue's recycled mesh material, the Ghost has undergone a climate-conscious makeover. Brooks is also transitioning to sustainable manufacturing and shipping, and recycling used shoes instead of dumping them in landfills. But when tinkering with your best-selling model, you don't want to mess it up. Rest easy, Ghost fans. Neither quality nor performance was compromised in this update. Brooks removed the BioMogo DNA portion of the midsole, so the Ghost 14 has only DNA loft foam. Just like its plusher counterpart, the Glycerin. Our testers found this adjustment doesn't change the Ghost ride noticeably. It had a nice balance of cushioning and firmness during turnover, said a tester. Adding that the Ghost felt more responsive than the Glycerin and Adrenaline GTS Amanda Fur. Moving on to the next at number 2 with Adidas Ultra Boost 21. Less than a decade ago, Adidas appended running shoes when it introduced Boost, launching today's foam wars. In the years since, new compounds have delivered insane levels of comfort without the weight penalty of Boost. Adidas itself has moved on to other lightweight materials. Boost is steadily disappearing from its performance line, but the material retains all its plush glory in the Ultra Boost. In fact, the 2021 version actually gets 20% more boost than the original and 5% more than UB19. The shoe signals a commitment to performance running, and its new design departs from the silhouette that has been embraced for lifestyle and casual wear. Another big update is the company's use of recycled materials. The Prime Blue Upper is made from 92% recycled ocean plastic. Speaking of plastic, the darn cage is back for midfoot support, but fear not, it isn't really a bother. All of our testers praise the shoe soft, luxurious upper, which cradles your foot and secures it to that extra thick sole. It's a heavy shoe, no doubt, which means you'll reserve this tank for easy jogs and recovery days. J.T. The number 3 position is held by New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 Velvet. Last year's 1080 earned NB and Editor's Choice Award, and this update was a hit with our test crew too. That's because it's almost identical to last year's model. Perhaps the biggest change is Bellevin's knit upper, which has a stretcher forefoot that makes the shoe fit better for runners with wide feet. That change also makes the shoe a little more breathable. But a few wear testers noted that the upper creates extra pressure through the midfoot, making the shoe a little uncomfortable on long runs. The sole remains unchanged, except for a slight cosmetic tweak to the dot pattern on the sidewall. You still get the thick slab of Fresh Foam X, which boasts higher energy return and comfort than the classic Fresh Foam. On the run, it doesn't feel overly soft or slow, which we like because that boosts the shoe's versatility. Those small tweaks might make the new version a better option for some runners, if not. You can probably find last year's equally good running shoe at a deep discount. Next at number 4 we have a 6 Gel Kayano 28. The Kayano has been a part of the A6 lineup for decades, and it remains one of the company's most popular shoes. Designed to deliver support for overpronators, many neutral runners reach for it because of its legendary comfort. The Kayano 28 is upgraded with Flight Foam Blast, cushioning for a smooth, responsive ride and a new low-profile hail clip for added support. Gel pods remain under the heel and forefoot, giving you extra shock absorption, and the dual-density midsole and medial plate work together to counter overpronation in your stride. The number 5 position is held by a 6 Novel Blast 2. Then try the Novel Blast, a rogue running shoe so different from a 6's traditional offerings that some runners hardly recognized it as an A6. The first version had midsole that protruded at angles that looked like the surface of the Epcot ball. Flight foam blast made for a wickedly bouncy run, but it was about as stable as a vat of radioactive plutonium. For the sequel, A6 reigned in that reckless ride with a more supportive midsole. Designers carved out some foam from the lateral sidewalls and added more foam to the medial side to help keep the shoe from collapsing inward as you roll through your stride. The midsole foam itself has the same chemistry, so the ride feels just as springy and energetic, but is more controlled underfoot. Take the Nava Blast out for long runs at a steady clip when you want to simply zone out and set the cruise control. Why? Because the midsole truly does feel trampoline-like. Upon landing, 
You sink into the foam slightly before rebounding a sensation that reminded one tester of loping across a birthday party bounce house. The number six position is dominated by Brooks Launch GTS 8. You're not wrong if you thought GTS stood for go to shoe. This year, Brooks is simplifying its naming convention by pairing stability shoes to its neutral siblings and tacking on GTS now redefined as go to support. The next Transcend and Bedlam, for example, have been named the Glycerin GTS and Levitate GTS. And, in the case of the Ravna, it's now being called the Launch GTS, a light stability shoe that's speedy like the neutral launch. Testers appreciated the comfortably firm cushioning and found Brooks's holistic guide rail system. Firm foam along the medial and lateral sides of the heel serve as bumpers to align the knee and ankle supportive. The most noticeable revamp besides the name is the new Air Mesh Upper. Testers liked that it was light and breathable, Yet some wish for a more traditional padded heel collar instead of the oddly shaped one here. It felt to me that the heel collar was too high on my ankle, said a tester, and it rubbed my lateral ankle bone, causing discomfort. Moving on to the next at number 7 with Saucony Guide 14. Saucony's versatile stability shoe now looks race ready with 3D print overlays adorning the engineered mesh uppers and sharing the same color scheme of the racier Convara. The guide is plush padding in the heel collar and gusseted tongue. This stability version of Saucony's ride has a lightweight TPU medial post and sturdy heel counter to lend support, which testers found comfortably supportive. One tester even had a revelatory moment wearing the shoe. I often lean toward more cushioned shoes with the assumption that, being a curvier runner, the weight striking the hard surface was the cause of some injuries, she said. The guide gave me some cushioning, but the shoe's stability helped fix my pain. This shoe is still soft, though, thanks to Saucony's PWR on midsole, combined with a top layer of PWR on plus. The latter is composed of a lightweight foam that promotes a springier step while absorbing impact. The number 8 position is held by Saucony Peregrine 11SD. One might guess that SD stands for stability or speed trainer, but Saucony actually uses it here to designate that this version of it. this popular trail shoe is tuned for soft terrain though its ride would make those other guesses accurate. 2. A wide platform and low drop give the Peregrine its stable feel, and an upgrade to premium PWR on plus cushioning this year offers more go-fast energy return. But you'll also find that on the standard running shoe, what sets the SD apart is its muck-loving outsole and upper, which are built for a full send along swampy single track. The toothy lugs are 1.5 and longer, with more spacing between each to shed mud quickly and the upper is switched to an abrasion-resistant mesh outfitted with quick lacing. To secure the shoe, just cinch the skinny bungee cords and stow them inside the tongue. There's no fiddling with wet bunny ears. Plus, the entire shoe is cloaked in its own mud guard. If that's still not enough splatter protection, you'll find additional loops to add your own gaiters. The Peregrine was exceptional across the board, said one tester, wonderfully responsive and capable across deep mud and loose gravel to snow with an amazing fit that needed none of my usual lacing tricks. Finally, the number 9 position is dominated by Salomon Ultra Glide. Traditionally, Salomon's speedy kicks earned their reputation for being fast, for sure, but also are quite firm, aggressive, and narrow, better suited for elites and mid-pack runners. The Ultra Glide is Salomon's most cushioned and most accessible trail shoe. The first time I wore the shoe was on day 5 of a 327-mile FKT run in April. After over 250 miles, the hills, rocks, and hours piled up, and I was craving more protection for the final stretch. The upper provided enough protection for my tired feet when I inevitably kicked rocks and roots, while the rocker design and extra cushion underfoot took the sting out of pavement and extra rocky sections, enough for me to keep the shoe on for 75 miles. In our testing, though, we found that it stumbles a bit on big mountains. Runner-in-Chief Jeff Dengue put it to the test in the Adirondack High Peaks, climbing 5,000 feet over 7 miles, then descending a vertical kilometer in less than 3 miles. The shoe held firm on runnable ground and while climbing over boulders, but the traction didn't inspire confidence on flat, wet slabs of rock near the summits. In those conditions, it's better to reach for a shoe with sticky rubber designed for wet terrain. That's all for today. We upload fitness product review videos every single day. So, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the upcoming video notification.